in this edition of Straight Talk, I examine some of the major challenges and forces that are driving change in irrigation and the key areas of reform that we at IMI think will help sustain Asia's food needs. Asia accounts for 70% of the world's irrigated area and has some of the most extensive irrigation systems in the world. Most of these systems were built during the 1960s and 70s when the major concern for the countries in the region was to prevent famine and ensure food security. Since then, many of these schemes have fallen into decline and are suffering from low performance and are in need of rehabilitation if they are to meet the growing demand for food in Asia in the future. The most significant impact of well-run irrigation systems is that they make cheap food widely available to both the rural and urban poor. Reliable irrigation stabilises and improves crop yield by facilitating adoption of green revolution technologies, makes multiple cropping possible and enables smallholders to grow high value crop and increases on-farm employment. It has been observed that prosperous irrigation districts tend to have high numbers of rural poor who come in large numbers from dry areas in search of food and work. The availability of canal water close to farming communities also reduces shocks from rainfall variability and can be used for multiple purposes to enhance livelihoods. Half or more of Asia's irrigation schemes were originally designed to irrigate rice and to produce food for a smaller population than today. Agricultural production has increased steadily during the last 20 years as a result of farmers adopting green revolution technologies, enabling us to feed a growing population until now. Food production in Asia today is influenced by three key factors. Firstly, rising populations and dietary changes favour meat and vegetables. Secondly, urbanisation offers farmers opportunities to diversify but also puts new pressure on water supplies. And thirdly, fluctuations in the world's fuel and food prices. Surface irrigation continues to be the dominant mode of irrigation in Asia, although groundwater irrigation has grown rapidly in recent years, particularly in India and northern China. Groundwater is often privately owned and does not require the challenging organisational structures that are required of surface water schemes. In the 1980s, many governments in Asia embarked on a path to reform their irrigation institutions. It was concluded that many irrigation schemes were not performing productively enough to meet the demands for food. Poor operation and maintenance were said to be the cause of these problems. Another major issue was the fact that farmers were not involved in management decisions regarding irrigation. Irrigation reform through irrigation management transfer and participatory irrigation management was seen to be a panacea for underperforming irrigation systems. Many countries jumped on board immediately, organising farmers into water user associations that would manage the daily operations of the irrigation canals. Our research shows that the cooperative action that is meant to arise from participatory irrigation management in large schemes only takes place under a very context-specific set of conditions. These cannot be replicated in many places and so that the success of irrigation reform that followed this path is not consistent. Similar outcomes were found when reviewing irrigation reform where public-private partnerships were tried. Even in these cases, the successes in terms of better performing irrigation institutions were only seen in cases where a certain set of conditions, some pre-existing, enabled them to be successful. Our research shows that there are some broad strategies that can be used to revitalise irrigation in Asia. We need to modernise schemes. Most irrigation schemes were built before the 1970s and have operated for 40 years and more and now need to be modernised by being redesigned, operated and managed for a range of uses. We need to support farmer initiatives. Although surface irrigation has remained stagnant or been shrinking, Farmers have raised yields by scavenging water from other sources, such as reusing wastewater and using groundwater via cheap motorised pumps. We believe there are opportunities to help farmers access other sources in a planned and sustainable manner. We need to look beyond the PIM-IMT blueprint. 
the successes of IMT across Asia are not always the same. We need to look at how other players could improve irrigation performance, particularly the effectiveness of the private sector. We also need to expand knowledge and capacity. More investment needs to go into training staff within irrigation bureaucracies and attracting new talent through progressive curricula and better pay. We also need to invest outside of the water sector. There is a strong link between agricultural policy and decisions regarding water use and allocation. One way to directly influence irrigation performance is to frame policies to ensure external influences on the water sector are properly understood and planned. These broad strategies provide some direction for how irrigation institutions could reform. To revitalise Asia's irrigation, it is important to note that blueprints do not work and we need to look for solutions that best suit the conditions in the specific regions. This is Colin Chartres at the International Water Management Institute.